Should we be entering the credit card payment from the credit card bank feed or should we be entering the credit card payment from the bank account bank feed? The answer is it depends on which account you reconcile first. Okay, That's the way I do it. So if I reconcile my credit cards first, which is very common because credit cards never close at the end of the month, always close in the middle of the month, then I want to process that from my credit card bank feed. If I if I do my credit cards after I do my bank, then I want to create the transaction first and then uh, uh, match it when, when I look at it on the other account. Because what happens is if you, if you end up doing this, right, which, which is a very, very common case where you actually uh, possibly, um, just, okay, where we possibly categorize it correctly in both sides where we went we, 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 on the banking side, on the credit card side, we classified it to the source bank account. On the source bank account, we classified it from the credit card and we skipped the whole matching purpose. This could happen and they're both correctly uh, reconciled. The problem you're gonna have is then when you go into the check register, so I'm gonna go into the check register of uh, the bank, you're gonna see the transactions are essentially duplicated, okay? When I go reconcile, let's say I'm gonna reconcile this account, 9994, I'm gonna click on reconcile, and I'm gonna reconcile account 9994. Let's say the ending balance of this is negative 12, whatever that transaction was, I mean, what was it, 12,825. So 825.94, and let's say that's 131, 21 or 22821 doesn't really matter. Oh, 22821. Click on reconcile. Basically, because the the one that came through the bank feed, the one I just entered, is the first one. This is going to cause a big problem because right now, when I click on finish now, essentially the the um, one is cleared on one side and the other one is cleared on the other side. Let me explain what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go into reconciling 9994. Let's say the next month, I'm gonna go reconcile it. Okay, so I'm gonna reconcile the next month. I'm gonna see a, sort of a, a hanging transaction there from January still sitting there. That's the duplicate. If I were to reconcile a different account, so I'm gonna reconcile the credit card account. Let's say I'm now gonna reconcile the next month. So you're 22821. I'm also going to see um, a different hanging, tra hanging transaction in there. So I'm going to see both transactions hanging on both sides. So how will we fix that problem? There's actually two ways to fix that problem. I'm going to call it, I'm going to do the easy way, which means not screwing up previous reconciliations, which is basically I take this one, I'm going to click on edit, and be very careful because in this particular transaction, the bank side has already been reconciled. So I'm not gonna change the source account. I'm just gonna change the destination account. I can create an account called transfers. It's basically a clearing account called transfers. It's a bank account. And then I click on save and close. And then I'm gonna go back to reconcile my other account. Again, this is after we reconciled and we cleaned it and we really don't want to go back and mess up any reconciliations. So I'll go back to the other one, the other duplicate, and then send that instead of, again, this is now the one that's being reconciled on the Chase side. Now the duplicate is on the bank side. Send this one now to transfer. So by doing that, I'm basically sending them both to a clearing account. I clean up my reconciliation screen. When I go into my balance sheet, Yes, I have a transfers account that I hate. I know you, your accountants, you hate seeing that. But if it's zero, there's no negative net effect to the bank. It's all fixed. It's all in there. You can call it credit card transfers. You can call it transfer cleanup. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Again, as long as you, uh, you do that, you will have that set up. Let's say you don't like this technique. Let's say you want to do it correctly. Well, to do it correctly, what we're going to do is we are going to send this back to where we had it before. Again, we're gonna, we're gonna have it wrong again. So we'll do this one. 
and then we'll do the other one. Okay. Okay. And then once we know what happened, once we know what happened, all we need to do is uh, undo, delete them, delete the duplicate one, and redo the reconciliation for both. I find that to be sort of the long way. Instead, I'm just going to break the reconciliation. So I'm going to go into banking here. So let's go into, sorry, I'm going to go into the balance sheet. And then I'm going to go into this transaction. And the one that's already been reconciled, let me pull that again on the reports. Okay, and then we'll bring that over to, let's just put it here next to amount. It's usually easier when you put it there next to amount. You kind of see it once. So we're going to look at that 12,000 and change. The one that's already been reconciled and we're going to break it. Where's the 12,000? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong account. Let's go back here. And it's the account 9994. Here we go. Sorry. So account 9994. I'm going to pull up the one that has been cleared. And again, I'm purposely, I'm purposefully gonna break the one that's already been cleared. Okay, and the way I purposely break it, it's either by deleting it or by unclearing the R from the check register manually. What does that mean? So I'm gonna go back into my chart of accounts. I'm gonna go into the register. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna click on this little gear menu and open up my banking status. Oh, sorry, my reconcile status. And now we get to see that there is an R next to it. So I'm going to uncheck the R, click on save. I broke my reconciliation. My reconciliation is now completely messed up. So I'm going to get rid of that one. And I'm just going to leave it like that. Then I'm going to go back and sort of reconcile the account again. So I'm going to sort of fix the reconciliation by reconciling it again. So I'm going to reconcile uh, the 228 again with that same balance I used in the past, which is 12,825.94. Again, I'm re-reconciling, I previously reconciled, and this time around, I'm gonna select the one that was added through, the one that was added to the bank feeds, the one that doesn't have a, remember I broke the other one from the clearing date, so I'm gonna select this one. And then once I select this one, I can come in to the one that's on the credit card payment, and I can edit it, and I can just delete it. Yes, I'm, now I'm breaking the bank side. That's okay. I'm re-reconciling it on the bank side to then clean it up. And then I'm going to go back and reconcile my credit card again. That has an issue, of course. Let me go ahead and reconcile again my January 26. Let's pull up that statement. Again, we're deep in the weeds of fixing reconciliation discrepancies. Okay, so that's going to be um, 30,408.53. We already kind of did that. So 30,408.53. Click on save. And now that one transaction is missing. And this is the clean one because we already deleted the other one. And this is the one that's been cleared on the other side. Mark that. Finish now. And eventually I cleaned up my uh, transfer duplicates. This stuff happens all the time, this, all these crazy ones. I find this process to be a little bit insane from a mechanics perspective. Uh, so I like that transfer account, clearing account uh, better, just because it's just kind of, in my opinion, a little bit cleaner to fix, easier to fix um, at the end.